Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the Learning OpenGL series. In this lesson, we're going to continue learning a little bit about the history of OpenGL just to give you an understanding of how we got to modern OpenGL. So with that said, let's go ahead and dive into the lesson. So this lesson itself deserves a slide because we're going to be doing a little bit of a history. Now OpenGL has a very rich history because it's been around since the 90s. And around 1991 is when a company called SGI started developing OpenGL. And what the real key or the killer feature of OpenGL was initially is that it ran on multiple platforms. So that meant Windows, Linux, Mac machines, gaming consoles, you name it, OpenGL could run on it. And today that's still one of the key reasons to be learning OpenGL and following in this series, for example. So during its inception, OpenGL starts getting developed. And then in version 1.1 and 1.2, we start getting new features added, things like texturing and so on that started making our graphics applications more interesting. You can probably see this evolution if you've been following video games for a long time, that the as the graphic APIs got better, the games and their graphics got better along with the hardware and so on. But one of the major leaps was around version 1.5 where OpenGL started having extensions. And this is where we start getting into things like shaders, but basically something called the architecture review board allowed companies to start sending in uh, extensions based off of their hardware so you could do cooler things with OpenGL. Now, where OpenGL starts getting really interesting and into the sort of modern stage is around version 2.1 where we get something known as a programmable pipeline. That is that we as programmers can actually write programs that compile on your graphics card and execute on your graphics card. So now all of a sudden you've got your CPU, which you're used to compiling and running programs on, and your GPU, which can also compile and run programs on. And that gave us as programmers the ability to create neat graphical effects and just offload a lot of the work from the CPU onto the GPU to do even more things which it was good at. And that's where you see the leap in graphics around version 2.1. Now, as we will in this series, we'll be working with version 3.3 and beyond here. This is really the modern version of OpenGL because we start removing some of this old functionality that's been around all the way since the 90s, which involved a fixed function pipeline, which we couldn't change or couldn't really program. So that's what we're going to be working on in this series here, all the way up to version 4.6. So we get things like compute shaders for general purpose computation, um, geometry shaders for generating new geometry, tessellation shaders for adding more detail, all these new things here in the last couple of years that have been added to OpenGL. So there's really a lot of power in OpenGL, and it's been an evolving continuously API that is getting better and better for us as programmers. So that's just a little bit of a history lesson so you understand where OpenGL has come from, and then it has this rich history, and where we're going to be focusing and where you should be focusing if you're learning OpenGL today is on the modern version. All right, folks, with that said, I hope you enjoyed this lesson and, again, are just getting a little bit of the culture and the history of OpenGL because I think that's also an important part of becoming a graphics programmer as you're following this series. And because you're following this series by now, I hope you're subscribed so you don't miss any of the future lessons. And with that said, let's go ahead and end it here, and we'll see you in the next one.